Pakistan and features community information and entertainment. sadness, but of also out of celebrating the spark of human life. And even when it's extinguished, that spark reignites again. And, uh, and it's through the, the memories that we share, the prayers that we, uh, we invoke, um, by summoning our common humanity, we can really bring out the best in each and all of us. And that is the, uh, the spirit that, uh, that we all claim to be a part of. Now, um, I would like to acknowledge uh, my, my dear friend, uh, Ikias Popet. I've known him since we were rather, we had more hair and we were <laughs> younger folks. And, uh, uh, but, uh, and he's uh, been a very tireless uh, community activist and worker. And I'd like him to make the um, safety remarks and also to make an acknowledgement on the, uh, the land uh, in the growing. So, thank you. Assalamualaikum ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all this evening to express solidarity with the people of Kashmir. The event is celebrated to convey that the government and people of Pakistan stand behind the downtrodden and oppressed people of occupied Kashmir. I am sure most of you would know about the history and genesis of the Kashmir issue on which I am not going to dwell. However, I would just add that it is one of the major and protracted issues on the UN agenda. You would also appreciate that the trials and tribulations of the people of Kashmir are quite old. The problem compounded after India's landing of its troops in Srinagar on the 27th of October 1947. India itself took the matter to the United Nations. 
the UN adopted a number of resolutions recommending a free and impartial plebiscite, which are being flouted by India till this day. Ladies and gentlemen, now uh, to begin the proceedings, I will request Maulana Sajid Khan to recite from the Holy Quran. Maulana Sajid Khan. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wal asr. إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم قسم ہے زمانے کی بے شک انسان گھاٹے میں ہے الا الذين امنوا مگر جو لوگ ایمان لائے اور نیک کام کیے اور حق پر قائم رہنے کی اور صبر کرنے کی آپس میں تلقین کرتے رہے صدق اللہ العظیم Sundays at 3.30 p.m., Dil Afna Pakistan brings you Canadians with roots in Pakistan and features community information and entertainment. I can help immigration unlock gateway to Canada. For your immigration needs, uh, call 1-778-239-7861, Sayyid Riyaz Khan. Contact Sayyid Riyaz Khan. UDC Design. UDC Design. Aapko apne ghar ki nakshon ke liye Vancouver Lower Mainland mein जहाँ भी आपको ज़रूरत हो आप अपने नक्शे यू डी सी डिज़ाइन से बनवाइए ये आपके मकान को चार चांद लगा देंगे नंबर है सेवन सेवन एट एट फाइव एट एट सेवन नाइन फोर Now I read messages from the President and Prime Minister of Pakistan. First of all, the message from the President of Pakistan. Today we express our solidarity with the brave and resilient people of Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir who have rendered unmatched sacrifices for their legitimate right to self-determination over the course of the past seven decades is an indomitable struggle for freedom from oppression. It has been a battle of hope against overwhelming odds, of courage against fear, and of sacrifice against tyranny, but through all of it, the Kashmiri people have persisted, unrelenting and proud like they have always been, to deny India the perverse gratification of subjugating them. On 5th August, India absolved itself of the last pretense of civility and justice by trying to deprive the Kashmiri people of their very identity. Through its illegal and unilateral actions of 5th August 2019, India directly contravened the relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions and tried to further brutalize the Kashmiri people and take additional measures to deny them their legitimate right to self-determination as promised by the international community through those resolutions. The world, however, has rejected India's treacherous behavior and its sham democracy now stands exposed in front of the international community. Pakistan will continue to raise the issue of Jammu and Kashmir at every available forum. 
India's illegal actions of 5th August have further strengthened the bond between the people of Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir and Pakistan. The government and people of Pakistan will continue to extend their political, moral and diplomatic support to the Kashmiri people until they get their legitimate right to self-determination as per the UN Security Council resolutions. Now I read out the message from the Prime Minister of Pakistan on the occasion of Kashmir Solidarity Day. Today we observe the Kashmir Solidarity Day to reaffirm our unflinching support for our Kashmiri brothers and sisters who have been subjected to an inhuman lockdown and communications blockade for six months now. The unprecedented length of these restrictions has fully exposed the fiction of India's democracy and its scant regard for basic human norms. The Kashmiris, the Muslim Ummah, Pakistan and the international community have rejected India's travesty of law and justice. India has turned 8 million Kashmiris into prisoners in their own land through the deployment of over 900,000 occupation troops. History has few precedents of such suffocation and violation of the fundamental rights at this scale. Tens of thousands of innocent people have been arbitrarily detained and thousands of young boys abducted and incarcerated at undisclosed locations. This is a true manifestation of Indian state terrorism. The international community, major human rights organizations and the international media have been unanimous in their condemnation of India's unacceptable actions. India stands before the world exposed as a, as a majoritarian and authoritarian polity tramping upon the basic rights and freedoms of the Kashmiri people. Pakistan demands immediate lifting of the military siege and communications blackout, as well as rescinding of India's illegal and unilateral actions. All those illegally arrested and incarcerated should be released, and the draconian laws enabling impunity to Indian occupation forces be immediately repealed. The international human rights and humanitarian organizations as well as international media should be allowed access to evaluate the human rights situation in the occupied territory. We urge the international community to play its role in ensuring respect for the fundamental human rights and freedoms of the Kashmiri people and averting grave risks to global peace and security posed by India's belligerent rhetoric and aggressive actions. We express our unshakable solidarity with the people of Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir and assure that Pakistan will always stand shoulder to shoulder with them. Pakistan will continue its moral, uh, political and diplomatic support until the Kashmiri people have realized their legitimate right uh, of self-determination in accordance with the UN Charter and the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would request Council General Dr. Tariq to say a few words. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and good evening. As you all know, we are gathered here tonight to express solidarity with the people of Kashmir. The event is held every year in Pakistan and all over the world to express solidarity with Kashmir since 1991. The day is being observed to extend political, moral and diplomatic support to the oppressed people of Kashmir who have been suffering enormously at the hands of government of India since 1947 and being brutalized even today. The government and people of Pakistan hold Kashmir and the people of hold Kashmir and the people of Kashmir dear to their hearts. The issue of Kashmir is not only an unfinished partition agenda, it has broader human dimensions and the inalienable right of self-determination of people of Kashmir have been acknowledged in the UN Security Council resolution. Ladies and gentlemen, the ardent advocate of Kashmir and a student of the history of Kashmir would know how the people of Kashmir have been repressed throughout its long history. The repression and brutalization of Kashmiri reminds me of a famous couplet of a famous poet Mirza Abdul Qadir Badil who says, Shab Rab to Sahar Nashut wa Shab Ahmad. The night has parted, the day has not dawned, and the night has set in. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the struggle of people of Kashmir is characterized by defiance, resilience, courage, and forbearance. Since the occupation of Kashmir in 1947, the patience and determination of people of Kashmir has not faded despite unprecedented sacrifices. Since 1989 and launching of Intifada, their zeal for their inalienable rights has attained new heights. The people of Kashmir have embarked on what we call Rasme Shabiri, that you continue to raise your voice against atrocity and barbarism, whatever price you have to pay, but you don't have to bow. Ladies and gentlemen, the struggle of the people of Kashmir for upholding human dignity and freedom is quite old. Today marks the end of the sixth month since the government of India's action of August 5th, 2019, revoking of autonomy. Uh, this has resulted in massive deployment of troops, curfew, communication blackout, including shutting down of internet and phones, arbitrary detention of thousands of Kashmiris, including political leaders, activists, journalists, lawyers, and potential protesters. Curbs on peaceful protests, restriction on children going to school and people seeking medical care in defiance of international human rights instrument still persists to this day. Despite strong voices at home and abroad, the government of India has not heeded to international pressures. The government continued to use draconian sedition and counter-terrorism laws to silence peaceful dissent as well as at the non-governmental uh, as well as non-governmental organization levels targeting those organizations who have been critical of the government's actions or policies. As mentioned in the Prime Minister's speech, the Indian government action has received widespread condemnation from the international human rights bodies, including United States Congress, European Parliament, UN Human Rights Council, Human Rights Watch, and OIC, Independent Permanent Human Rights Commission. According to the South Asia Director at the Human Rights Watch, quote, Instead of addressing growing attacks on minorities, Indian at atrocity bolstered their efforts to silence critical voices in 2019. The Indian government's unilateral action in Jammu and Kashmir in August 2019 caused enormous, enormous suffering and rights violation of the Kashmiri population, Human Rights Watch said in its World Report 2020. The OIC Independent Permanent Human Rights Commission has conveyed its dismay and strong condemnation over the continued ongoing human rights violation. In its statement, the OIC IPHRC said that since 5th August, the Indian government has deployed more than half a million security personnel to contain the backlash against its illegal illegal measures which has practically turned the Indian occupied Kashmir into the biggest open prison in the world. There are credible reports of inflicting collective punishment in form of gang rapes, house to house searches, stripping of young men and women, closure of business in schools, shutting down of internet and landline, and detention of torture of politicians, journalists, human rights activists by the Indian security forces. However, the infamous laws of Armed Forces Special Power Act and Pu Public Safety Act and Public, uh, Public Safety Act enable Indian security forces to trample human rights of inno innocent Kashmiris with absolute impunity, said the Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, the issue of Kashmir and the government of India's action has be devil peace in the region. It may have grave, grave consequences for the future of South Asia, where one-fourth of the world population live and which is 
one of the most impoverished region in the world. The observance of Kashmir Solidarity Day is to highlight the importance of this protracted issue which has been on the UN agenda since Uh, we begin our programs with a prayer, uh, we end them with a prayer, and we're going to be hearing prayers and poetry from a number of different folks that are here in this room. But we'd like to start, and I'd like to ask Brother Yusuf uh, to recite a passage of the Holy Quran and give a translation if you could as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, thank you all for coming, everyone. It's a huge honor to see your faces here supporting, you know, the cause of peace and justice. Uh, I'd like to thank some of our honored guests, uh, Councillor Foyle, Councillor Swanson, who was kind enough to stand for justice and push forward with the initiative, uh, as well as my good friend Rabbi Bregman, um, elders. I'm going to recite uh, a small passage from the Quran, and then I'll recite, uh, give you a bit of the uh, paraphrased translation and translation uh, of that. Bismillahir uh, Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yomidi, Iyak and Abudu, or Iyak and Astain, Ihdina Serat and Mustakim, Serat and Ladina, and Amta Alehim, Kaila and Abu Alehim, or the Dalim. So, this is the first chapter of the Quran. Uh, it's called the opening, and basically, it says, In the name of God, the Beneficent, the Merciful. The Beneficent, the Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment. You alone we worship. You alone we ask for help. Guide us to the straight way, the way of those on whom you have bestowed your favor, not the way of those who have earned your anger or who have gone astray. In an event like this, it is so vital for us to remember that the hearts and minds of those united for peace and kindness and coexistence are stronger and more united and more powerful than those who might have different views. In Canada, we are blessed that we have people of all black backgrounds, of all races, of all nationalities. I hope that the prayer I said impacts our hearts and brings us closer to the path of the right way, which is the one of values, of uh, shared friendships, of tolerance, of peace, mercy, and of blessings. Thank you very much. So, three years ago, on, a, on, on this day, on January 29th, it was a cold day in Montreal, cold day in Quebec. And people were gathered, just like here. They were praying. They were praying to their to their God. They were together as brothers in, in faith and in peace. And in what they thought, and what they had every rightful um, understanding to believe that they were safe. They were safe in their place of worship. And um, a lone gunman came in and um, he caused havoc. He caused pain, he caused suffering, he caused loss. And uh, this, this act of violence, it, it, it happens all too often, yet it happened here in Canada, and it shocked Canadians to their core. And so across this nation, in cities and towns all over, um, there was an outpouring, and there was a compulsion for people to gather in a place like this. And we experienced it that night, we had 50 people come in that night, the next day we had a thousand. The day after we had thousands and then we had the love over fear rally, which were many thousands. Why? Because it's, it's not who we are. It is not who we are to go and uh, um, be silent in the face of this kind of horror. This is a time where we have, there's a warmth amongst people who live in a cold country. Uh, our hearts were warm when we gathered together and came together as a human family. Now since then, six people dead in a, in a mosque, shot to death, huge tragedy, New Zealand, flash forward a couple of years later, how many people senselessly slaughtered with an AR-15, machine gun to death? First in one mosque, but thank God in the second, a brother was able to overtake the attacker. Pittsburgh in a synagogue, uh, a, a gunman came. Another synagogue just recently, another fellow came. In a church, uh, 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 church attacks, many of them. School shootings. It's, uh, it, it is 
in its totality uh, an insanity and a heartbreak that we have had to endure again and again and again and again. And where will it stop? Where will it stop? We don't know. But all we can do is take a stand. Take a stand right here as human beings. Take a stand as brothers and sisters to say that, look, you know what? I'm here for you. And, uh, and you're here for me. And if anything happens, you know, run for the exits. But, you know, if I got to be that guy to tackle that gunman, I'll do it. You know, and it, 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 or you would do it. Or it, this is the kind of thing where we must sacrifice one for the needs of the many. Our, our next speaker that I'd like to, to bring up uh, has been very close to our community and many communities over the years as, um, as a chief rabbi uh, within his community. And um, he has been very steadfast in support uh, of all communities. And uh, he's a very dear friend of ours, a bridge builder of peace between um, all of our people. So Rabbi Philip Reichman, please. Uh, this has been a, uh, a difficult week. It was January 25th in 1985. At 1.30 in the morning, I received the call from the fire chief that my synagogue on West 10th was fully engulfed and had been destroyed by a Molotov cocktail. I remember meeting Mike Hartfield and Peter Silvater, who was the mayor at the time. And he and Becky, uh, his wife, uh, actually gave a donation. I can help immigration unlock gateway to Canada. For your immigration needs, uh, call one seven seven eight two three nine seven eight six one. Sayyid Riaz Khan. Contact Sayyid Riaz Khan. UDC Design. UDC Design. आपको अपने घर की नक्शों के लिए Vancouver Lower Mainland में जहाँ भी आपको ज़रूरत हो आप अपने नक्शे UDC Design से बनवाइए. ये आपके मकान को चार चांद लगा देंगे नंबर है सेवन सेवन एट एट फाइव एट एट सेवन नाइन फोर